Hi everyone, and welcome to episode 12 of the APB podcast. I'm going to keep the intro very short this week because we've got a lot to get through. Um, in this week's episode, you're going to see the final part of the Mark Rain video, uh, so that'll tie everything up there. We're also going to have the Q&A session with EJ Moreland, so keep an eye out on that. You might have some of your questions answered. Uh, as usual, keep questions coming, because we will do another Q&A episode very, very shortly. And all that's left to say from myself, before we delve into things, is a quick thank you to everyone who donated and supported the APB 1000 push-up challenge. You'll be happy to know that Nicky and his team completed the, the challenge successfully, so uh, everyone who donated can rest easily that those guys put themselves through a month of grueling training uh, to help support a, a, a notable charity. So enjoy this week's episode, and we'll see you again next time for episode 13. There's a huge number of, uh, of, of base weapons, like assault rifles, like machine guns, sniper rifles, pistols, grenades, and eventually you can, you can upgrade those as well and, and kind of sort of define the weapon that you want. I want the rocket launcher. <laughs> Everyone wants the rocket Somebody launcher. Somebody was using the rocket launcher in one of the play sessions. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, that weapon. But you can see here, we get the weapon, and you were, you were pretty eager to get back and find out what you'd unlocked for winning that mission, right? Do a little dance. And you got yourself, if I remember correctly, you got a, uh, a rifle and a, a dart gun. Oh, yeah, the dart gun. Can you explain the rating above my head there, the number four? Yeah, so that number, um, that's showing the sort of the experience you have within the game. It's called, we call it, refer to it as rating. And, uh, yeah, it basically shows other people how experienced you are at playing APB. I'm I'm right up there with you now. <laughs> That's right. So there we've got um, we're going to a call for backup scenario. Um, you can see Ali Malachi showing up on our party screen up there. And uh, so anybody can call for backup at any time. That's right. Yeah. And the game will again dynamically match what it thinks is the best and throw out an offer. But you know they've called for backup, so yeah, this was quite a busy crime scene, wasn't it? Yeah, they were they were they were right in calling for backup. I think in this situation. Yeah. <laughs> This is good fun. Yeah, you did pretty well in this scenario. You can see how things get pretty heated pretty Here, quickly. Yeah, I sneak around the back. Yeah, you managed to get up top pretty well. Again, the whole empowering of your character, the climbing up the buildings and jumping from building to building, and it's just so easy. You got lucky with that kill, didn't you? He was yeah, reloading. he was reloading. <laughs> You saw here that there's that sort of white haze around the screen. What that's telling you is you've used a lot of stamina up. Yes. So while you are jumping down from buildings, you can't keep doing it. So what happens when I arrest somebody? You can arrest someone, and you were doing it in this situation. You did it pretty well. And, and while you know dying, it takes you out of the action for you know five, six seconds. When you arrest someone, it takes them out for 20 to 30 seconds. Yeah, and then seconds. you came and killed her. Why'd you do that? It's the way I roll, Mark. It's the way I roll. Oh, man. So that's it. That's that's your first tour of the Waterfront District of Samparo. This is so much fun. What a fantastic game. One of the best games I've ever played. I'm <laughs> so looking forward to this. I think people have no idea how good this is until they get their hands on it. I mean, you know, really the whole the whole the uh, the thing we're trying to push with the players is content. It really shines through in moments like the call to backup when you don't know what you're going into, all you get is the backup. Like, oh, they need help. You never know. You know what you're going to face, and in this situation, this is great. Everybody's yeah. <laughs> coming for you. I hit five stars. I did. I, I did enough that day that everyone wanted wanted a piece of me. I think it's time for me to leave. Yeah, I'll leave you to it, Mark. I'll, uh, I'll you try take to on all these guys. folks. Good luck. Thanks. Have well, thank you very much. It's Cheers, absolutely Mark. fantastic. It's been a pleasure. Okay, so Q&A time. Uh, thanks for coming out, EJ. No problem. Taking time out. He's a very busy man, this guy here. Um, so we appreciate it. Now, first off, um, we we're going to talk about consoles. Um, okay. We've covered it in podcasts before. We've been saying it as many times as we possibly could in the public. However, um, the most common question we had in the inbox and as well in the comments on YouTube um, is, will the game be coming out on 360 or PS3? First release, PC only. After that, who knows? First release, PC only. Cool. It's easy enough. Okay, so um, the first question comes from Dennis, and he says, 
Hi, you can call me Dennis. Hi, Dennis. <laughs> can the car uh, which you designed be stolen from you? No, player-owned vehicles cannot be stolen. That's actually one of the benefits of player-owned vehicles versus living city vehicles. Yeah, it's that straightforward. Um, okay, so then uh, Tyler Smith, um, he wants to know, will there be voice talking in the game? Uh, and if so, will there be a toggle key? So the idea is we want to give the player as much freedom as possible with voice over, voice over IP is what we're calling it, essentially voice chat. Uh, the idea is you can have a push to talk key if you want, or you can have voice actuated. Either one works fine. There you go. Um, now, uh, the third one comes from Charles Rowell, and he asks, what kind of weapon customization is there? So weapons are not visually customizable. At the moment, we have different uh, weapon models depending on the type of uh, uh, rewards you get. Sometimes the league rewards have cool, uh, unique weapon models. But overall, weapon visuals stay the same, but you can customize the functionality. You can add damage, you can add range. Basically, you can use functional upgrades to be able to, to tailor it out to your playstyle. Um, this one comes from Cody Lee, uh, and a lot of other people as well have been asking, can we have some uh, minimum and recommended system requirements for APB? So currently, we're still trying to optimize and determine exactly what our minimum spec is. Uh, for the beta, it's going to be pretty high spec. Uh, basically Unreal 3, the, the, the typical kind of specs for Unreal 3. Uh, for release, we're still defining that, so no, no answer as of yet. Okay, now this is another very popular one, uh, but we chose Steve Jackson's iteration. Will the game have player or clan housing? So, I wonder if that's Steve Jackson of Steve Jackson Games. That'd be, be cool if it cool. was, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, so, for first release, we're not going to have player housing or clan housing. It's certainly something we're investigating for add-ons for later. Yeah, there's been a lot of people asking about oh, this, yeah. and it's really popular. Oh, yeah, I'm excited about it personally. <laughs> uh, so a lot of people have been asking if uh, we could give them a bit more information about the difference between a standard and the Chaos rule set. So basically, standard is the core game. It's running missions, it's doing open world activities, it has our notoriety and prestige systems. Uh, it is what we've been working towards throughout this whole time. Chaos is an experiment for us. It's a way for players to go in and actually see the game without any collisions turned off, without any, uh, uh, basically, the ability to kill everyone and shoot it at anyone you want uh, in the standard rule environment. So it's really just a, a minor modification of the standard rule environment at this point. We have great plans for Chaos post-release. Chaos by name, Chaos by nature yes. is, is really the, uh, the case there. Um, and that player also asked, in Podcast 11, they saw the criminals lean. Is that something we're able to do in the game, or is it automatic? How does it work exactly? So the way it works is when you're in marksmanship mode, which is when you zoom in to get a better shot, uh, you can lean left or right around corners, you can pop up over crates, things like that. Uh, it's very basic cover system. Okay. Now this is also something that's been, uh, a lot of people have been talking about, there's been a bit of confusion out in the public about it. Who's um, the only first release? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but how does the limit of 100 people work? Um, a lot of people seem to be asked, think, under the impression um, that the servers are limited to 100 people and they're the people they'll be playing with forever. Okay. So if we clarify that a little bit. So uh, basically, in kind of the online concepts, a server is essentially a map. It's, it's a transient uh, action area. Uh, we, pr we persist all the stats, we, we, we track whatever you do, but that is a, one of many maps uh, in that specific world. So the world size is 10,000 concurrent players online. So it's 10,000 people potentially playing together at any given point with the account, the total number of players in that world probably around 100,000. But each individual action map has 100 people on it at any given time. So you'll be making friends in that pool of 100,000. Right. So for example, a league, like a daily kills league, is not based on, on you versus 100 other people. It's based on you versus the whole server population. So potentially 50, 60,000 people. Okay, um, the next question comes from Rob McGuinness. Uh, in the last podcast, dying seemed extremely painless. Uh, are there such things as respawn times or a death penalty to make death more undesirable? So we're definitely a fast-paced action game. The idea behind dying is we want to take you out of the action and give the opposing team a tackle advantage for killing you. As far as progression type penalties or really long respawns, we don't think it's really suitable for the game. It, it, it doesn't play right. Uh, we certainly see where there's some mechanical benefit for those types of systems, but for us, since it is an action game and we don't want you sitting out for long periods of time, we want you back in and fighting. And really, the enforcers as well, that's where they have their slight advantage with, with the, the arrest. arresting mechanics. Yes, definitely. You arrest someone, it does take them out for a lot longer, and it's great fun when you do it. Right. <laughs> okay. Maybe too long at the moment. <laughs> um, that's about as much time as we have for this week, but we will be doing another Q&A in the future, so make sure you get those questions coming to podcast.apv.com. Um, and thanks again, EJ. Appreciate so just it. remember, PC only, first <laughs> release. <laughs>